Would you state your name for the record, please? Jason Weshy. Jason, do you know Hannah Weshy? Yes, ma'am. How did you know her? She was my daughter. As of March 8th, 2018, where were you living? At 4004 Shank Road. It was just me and Hannah that lived there. There is another house that is seen in that picture. Whose house is that? That is Lindsay and TJ's home. Who is Lindsay? Um, Lindsay is, was the babysitter. Um, this is Lindsay. Pardon. March 6th, March 7th, and March 8th of 2018 are important dates in this case. Because those were the last few days of three-year-old, 32-pound, three-foot-tall Hannah Weshi's life. There's only two people that can tell us what happened here, Hannah and this defendant. And Hannah's not here to tell us what happened to her. We only need to prove that Hannah was abused and or that the defendant violated her duty to that child. Were you aware of Hannah receiving any injuries? Yes. Lindsay told me after I picked Hannah up. She had little bruises all over her chest and a pretty bad scrape on the chin. Lindsay said that her and her daughter Vivian were playing in the driveway and Hannah had tripped over the heel of her boot and fell on the rocks. She had a bruise on her chin and a black eye. One day, Lindsay said that she had stepped up on top of a toy on wheels and the toy kicked out from underneath of her. I got Hannah up. She brushed her teeth, got dressed. She ate and then I was putting her coat on. I texted Lindsay and told her that I was on my way over. Where did you go at that point? To my car. How do you put her in the car? Um, typically she sits up front, but that morning she laid in the back seat. Is that always how she rides in your car? Usually when I go to Lindsay, she wants to sit in my lap because she liked to drive. Um, but that morning she didn't want to get in the front seat. She wanted to lay in the back seat. And how far is it for you to get there? About 300 feet. How did you bring Hannah into the home? Do you recall specifically that? I day? was carrying her. I had her blanket over her. And where did you take her into? The back door of the garage. I gave her hugs and kisses. And that morning was a little different because she kept asking for a kiss over and over and over again. And then they went inside and I went down to my shop. I got out and started my truck. It was cold that day, so I got back in my personal vehicle to let my truck warm up. And that's when I got this phone call from Lindsay. I raced back up to her house. I walked in, Hannah was on the floor, and I was trying to tell her to breathe because she wasn't really breathing. Lindsay was kind of walking around asking what she should do. I told her to call 911, and then she called 911. Did Hannah ever regain consciousness? No, ma'am. When did she die? On March 18th. Were you ever aware of a bruise or pain that Hannah expressed to the back of her head? No, not the back of her head. Hannah died from traumatic brain injury due to blunt impacts to her head. I've shaved her hair because I couldn't tell with certainty whether or not she had injuries on her skin that I could see. This photograph shows two injuries that are visible on the skin of the scalp. Were there injuries that you noted that were significant to your ultimate determination in this Yes. Case? The bruises on the head, trauma to the eyes. Hannah also had brain damage, and that's the problem. She had tremendous brain damage. The impacts alone, the bruises themselves, weren't the problem. It was the blunt force, the tremendous force that went through her brain 
That was the problem. And if the force is sufficient, the person can't survive. You heard the first version of events that the defendant in this case gave first responders. Hi there, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. What's going on? Okay, my name is Lindsay. I'm at 1750 Square. I babysit kids. Yes. I'm Dr. Alt, and um, how old is Lindsay? Pass down. Pass down. Oh, this is great. Yesterday. March 8, 1142, her interview with Detective Sprague and Detective Lambert. She went to take off her jacket and fell forward. Casually walked in the door like normal and sat her down, you know, kissed goodbye, whatever. So I'm back to get you and she said, okay, bye. And I looked at her and I said, are you tired this morning or do you want to stay up? She said, I want to stay up. I said, okay. So we walked in. She was in front of me. I tried to take off my robe. She looked at me. Like, and we do couch and donut. And I said, of course, and she went to take off her jacket and just fell forward. And she didn't get back up. March 9th, the next day. Again, she went to take off her jacket and she just fell. And she fell like that and she, there was a wheel. I think, mm -hmm. I think she hit that. Okay. Do you have an opinion to a reasonable degree of medical certainty as to whether or not Hannah could have been walking or talking or behaving in a normal fashion after receiving the injuries uh, that resulted in her death? She could not. She would be neurologically abnormal right away, probably unresponsive within moments. This is really serious. Twelve minutes later. What accident caused this? She fell in the door and hit the concrete step. Wait. Thursday morning. Well, that's new. That's new information. So when she, I opened up the door, she was coming through, and she slipped on that concrete step and the metal part. She had the metal part on her And so I got her back up, and she stood up and looked up at me and did say, I want donut and couch, and then collapsed. Would a simple fall be sufficient to explain that? Absolutely not. That's, that's not what happened. It is. She no. slipped and fell. No. Okay, I did not. I she didn't fall 12 inches and traumatically bruised her. 1054, a few minutes later. Well, when I opened the door, I, I dropped her. No, you put her down, and when you walked out the door, I picked her up with the blanket, and it got tangled up. When I opened up the door, it got tangled, and I slipped. The blanket got underneath my foot, and we both fell. She smacked her face on that concrete step. And I hit the door. I didn't in a hurry. Would a fall being held by an adult explain the injuries that you saw? From ground level, a simple fall cannot explain this injury. This is much too great a force. Every time she comes home with a new scrape or bruise, mm -hmm. Dad asked her, what happened? Yeah. So what does she tell him, Dad, whenever he says, what happened here? What happened there? What happened here? What is it? What's the one word or one thing she is saying? I don't know. Babysitter. And I saw a, a slice of your life this morning at 9 a.m. Yeah. Kids screaming. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Do you yeah. ever, have you ever lost it? Well, let's take a look at the stress that the defendant was under. She had four kids, and I think all under the age of four, up to 12 hours a day. It does provide you with a potential motive for why the defendant would have snapped and hurt Hannah. A lot of these are consistent with what we've seen before. Okay. With kids being hurt. Yeah. Not by falls. Not by running into things. Okay. Hannah has been abused. No doubt about it. Yeah. 
slapped her upside the head and went mm -hmm. like that. Close? Yeah, like that. How many times? Don't say once. Because yeah. the bruise? Yeah. The bruise? yeah. Okay. I don't really think. I don't yeah. even know why I was mad about that. So these were close fists like uppercuts? Was she crying after her dad? Yeah. No, not crying. Just kind of like... Whining? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I kind of I shook her, and I remember picking her up and squeezing her, and we did ball. How hard did you shake her? Like, what, what was the shake? What was she was, she was in trouble. Shoving? Yeah. And you were angry. Yeah. Like you're looking at a 12-hour day ahead of you, yeah. and you're already dealing with this. Stop doing this already! That's right. Then what happened? I picked her up with the blanket, and that's when we fell, and then all that happened. Squeezing her chest, slapping her upside the head, hitting with her with a closed fist, and then finally on March 8th, shaking her. You're left with one reasonable explanation for Hannah's injuries on March 6th, 7th, and 8th, including that fatal injury to three-year-old, 32-pound, three-foot-tall, Hannah Weshi. And that explanation, ladies and gentlemen, is Lindsay Parton. And you heard denial after denial, but that truth finally came out. Lindsay, did you cause harm to Hannah Weshi? I did not. Why did you tell the police that you did? Because I wanted to protect everybody. Lindsay, did you cause harm to Hannah Weshi on March 8th? I did not. Did you cause harm to her on March 6th? I did not. Did you cause harm to her on March 7th? I did not. Why did you tell the police that you did? Because I wanted to protect everybody. What's the truth as to what happened to Hannah Weshi in the time frame you had her on March 8th? What I said in my first interview. We walked in the house and she collapsed. He was gone for 30 seconds at the most. Why did you think the fall on Wednesday had hurt Hannah? Um, concussion. Vivian jumped up on the train first. Okay. And then Hannah did it right after her. She fell and hit the, the floor. Okay. What did you do? Went to her immediately. I told him that she had felt fallen in the garage and I put ice on it uh, and I did check her pupils with a flashlight like my mom had done with my brother who plays soccer. I told him that he might want to get her checked out. She might have a concussion um, from my mom examination. She seemed okay, but... The cause of death here was brain swelling, subsequent to the impact. This whole thing did not occur in two minutes or in uh, one minute. Uh, this uh, uh, took time for the brain to swell. The brain doesn't swell instantaneously. Can you offer an opinion about the amount of time between the injury and the onset of the first symptoms? In this case, I do not believe it was immediate. If the state's pathologist had testified as to a significant or severe force, you would disagree with that? Yes, I would disagree with that. This uh, picture taken of the back shows a central bruise and it shows more bruising on a larger area below and to some extent to the sides. The bruising that occurred in the center, the dark area that I pointed out first occurred by contact on a flat surface. That bled and settled by gravity to this area, and that's what you're seeing. Right. So but the, the size of the impact is completely different to the size of the bruise that I showed you. Did you have a conversation with Jason about your interview with the police? I did. Did you tell him that the police told you it was you or him? Yes. Was it you? It was not. Then who was it? Jackson. It's speculation. 
and you have spent more time sitting in this room than the detectives bothered to look at a darn thing. A darn thing. What did they never, ever ask for? Jason Wesh's phone. And why would you find that important? Because what he did, where he was, and who he was with, and that means him he was with, is absolutely, positively important to this case. Wednesday, March 7th of 2018, which would be the night before or the day before. Yes, ma'am. Do you recall what time you picked Hannah up that day? It was a late night that night. It was about 7 o'clock p.m. What did you do after that? After that, I ended up taking, I had a friend of mine stay at my house, and I dropped him back off at his apartment that night. You remember telling detectives you went to go get milk? Yes, ma'am, I do. Did you do that? No, ma'am. Why'd you tell him that? I thought I did. I was just confused. I mean, at the time I was being questioned, I was focused on my daughter. You agree with me that you told that to the detectives at Fort Hamilton Hughes, correct? Yes, ma'am. You told, again, that same story that I went to Walmart to get milk to the detectives at Children's Hospital, correct? Yes, ma'am. And you told that again to the social worker at Children's Hospital, correct? Yes, ma'am. And then all of a sudden, now you know, oh my gosh, my friend Chris was over the last night my daughter was alive in my house, and now I remember that I drove him to Fairfield. I did Is that what you're telling this jury? Yes, ma'am. That's what you're telling this jury. I believe, and I think you do too, that the proper title of this case is State of Ohio versus Jason Weshey. How long did it take Jason to come over after you responded on this text? Seven minutes, eight minutes. You were running late that morning, weren't you? I may have been a minute late or so, yes ma'am. You had to wait a little bit for the car to warm up before you put it in reverse, correct? No ma'am. You didn't? No ma'am. You immediately shoved that thing into reverse and got the heck out of the driveway? Yeah, when I'm leaving for work, yes ma'am, I started Is that when car. Hannah fell in the back seat and hit her head? Hannah never fell in the back seat. Are you certain? I'm 100% certain. Because if she fell in the back seat, climbing over the front seat and hit her head and it killed her, then you'd be responsible. Well, isn't that true? I assume I would, yes, ma'am, but Hannah did not so fall in the back seat. So that's why you're pretty certain that that's not what happened? No, ma'am. He was never put in an interview room. He was never taken to the station. He wasn't sat in a room for four hours. He <coughs> was shown photographs of this child. He's either covering up for himself or covering up for his friend. Why didn't you throw Jason to the wolves, to the detectives on March 8th? I didn't want anybody to be in trouble. I wanted to protect everybody. Did you lie to the police? I told them what they wanted to hear. What do you mean you told them that what they wanted to hear? All of their questions, like leading into, it's an accident, did she fall, all of those things. I just agreed with them because the day before, for hours, I told them what happened. And even an hour into that second interview, I told them what happened. They didn't want to hear it. They actually told me they didn't want to hear it. They didn't care what I had to say of my truth. They only wanted their own answers. Um, I felt pressured. I felt forced. I felt bullied. The standard of law is very clear. Proof beyond a reasonable doubt. Proof beyond a reasonable doubt. And if you had a doubt based in reason and common sense, your verdicts are not guilty. That is what the law demands of you. That is what the law demands. As to count one of the indictment, endangering children, we the duly impaneled jury do find the defendant, Lindsay Parton, guilty. As to count two of the indictment, endangering children, we the duly impaneled jury do find the defendant, Lindsay Parton, guilty. As to count three of the indictment, endangering children, we the duly impaneled jury do find the defendant, Lindsay Parton, guilty. As to count four of the indictment in voluntary manslaughter, we the duly impaneled jury do find the defendant, Lindsay Parton, guilty. As to count five of the indictment, endangering children in violation of Ohio Revised Code Section 2919.22, subsection B1, we the duly impaneled jury do find the defendant, Lindsay Parton, guilty. And finally, 
Verdict Form 6. As to count six of the indictment, murder, we, the duly impaneled jury, do find the defendant, Lindsay Parton, guilty. All 12 signatures accompany the verdict. I believe that Lindsay Parton is innocent. I've known her my entire life. I've never seen her yell at her kids, act out against a child at all. I do not believe Lindsay could have hurt anyone. Over this last year, I've spent a lot of time with Lindsay. Not once have I asked her if she did this. I didn't need to. She's not capable of this. My brave daughter, smart daughter, loving daughter, caring daughter, adventurous daughter, beautiful daughter, strong daughter, charismatic daughter, gone. Our precious Hannah was robbed of an entire lifetime. Her family was robbed of an entire lifetime of her. No more birthday parties for Hannah. She will forever be free. <laughs> I can't even begin to describe the anger that I feel. Um, obviously, I'm hoping you give her the maximum punishment you can give her. Um, I hope she never gets out of jail for what you did to my daughter. I hope and pray every single day that you get the same treatment in jail that you showed my daughter. I do sentence the defendant, Lindsay Parton, to a lifetime imprisonment with parole eligibility after 15 years. I don't have any words of wisdom. I just hope that everybody at some point can find a measure of closure, and I wish everybody the best. That's really about all I can say about it. So with that, we will conclude the sentencing and uh, go off record. Thank you. Thank you.